Hello and welcome to On the Frontline, the grocer's new web series where we talk to people getting food and drink to the nation's supermarkets during the coronavirus crisis. I'm Daniel Wolfson, I'm the grocer's food and drink editor, and this week I caught up with James Watt, who is the CEO and co-founder of BrewDog. BrewDog, since its inception in 2007, has become one of the UK's most popular and recognisable craft beer brands. But as you'll hear from this interview, like many other alcohol suppliers, they face serious challenges when the coronavirus crisis broke out in March. James, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Um, you were hit with a double whammy at the start of the pandemic, not just uh, panic buying and the strain on the supply chain, but the complete closure of the on trade. So you lost a whole channel, basically. How do you even begin to plan and respond to a situation like that? Well, in the beginning, we didn't plan or respond at all. It was just blind panic at the end of March when this all kind of kicked off and we went into lockdown I wasn't sure if we were going to make it to the end of April or the or the end of May so we can we can have spent a, a day and a half in blind panic mode and then it was like okay what can we do and let's let's take some action here mm. and it's been insanely tough it's been an insanely tough time for families for businesses for individuals for the country for the economy and we've been no exemption to that it's been, mm. it's been very very tough for us as a business and it looks like we've maybe weathered the worst of the storm and we're just about getting to make it through, but definitely been the most challenging couple of months since we set up this business back in 2007. I mean, what were your first steps? Panic, panic, panic. <laughs> How are we going to make this through? Um, I then, one of my first steps that I haven't told anyone about, I bought, um, I bought 25 air beds and 25 sleeping bags on Amazon. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I had an air bed and sleeping bag in my office, but I also thought that it could be that all businesses are either shut down or they're not allowed people in or out mm. of that business. So I thought, okay, if we've got a crew of 25 of us who want to stay here for a month, we can at least keep the business going. We, mm. can, we can make the business work. That was one of the things that we did. Um, super focused on, on, on cost in our business as well. So, so important to, it's been so tight financially. I mean, we're doing mm. touch and go, so super tight in cost. And at the same time, focusing on making sure we can continue to make beer. And you and your co-founder, Martin, decided not to take a salary this year. So myself and Martin have forgone all salary this year. And then David McDowell, who's our fantastic CEO, has taken a 50% salary cut. And that has just enabled us to protect as many jobs as possible. So we kind of shared with our team when, when, when things started going south that we have got two aims here. And those two aims are, firstly, to survive as a business. And secondly, to protect as many jobs as we possibly can within our business. Mm. And by myself and Martin and David doing that, it's, it's helped us protect the highest number of jobs possible. When the on trade shut down, uh, one of BrewDog's responses to that was to completely switch up uh, your approach to NPD and your NPD pipeline over the coming year. Can you talk to me about that and how that's worked? Yeah, so we have just had to pull every single lever that we can get our hands on to try and, try and stay alive. And mm. our e-commerce business has been strong through COVID-19. And that's been one of the things that's kept us going. And we essentially had kind of 12 to 18 months worth of NPD in the pipeline. And mm. just to generate revenue to help us get us through, because so many of our revenue streams have been turned off. At the end of March, we lost 70% of our revenue as mm. a business. All 102 of our bars closed. All of our on-premise revenue by selling kegs and cans and bottles to other customers gone most of our export business gone so just to kind of try and offset that severe revenue loss we've had to try and do every single thing that we could possibly think of and one mm -hmm. of those things was okay if we take all these bits of npd that we're working on them and just fast track them and try and launch them as soon mm -hmm. as we can it's going to get some buzz it's going to get some excitement it's going to get people buying this and it should be incremental revenue so we launched our range of seltzers, spiked with our single malt uh, vodka. We have launched things like Double Punk, which is fantastic. We've launched a tropical um, infused hazy IPA. We're working in a local IPA. We've got a beer called Lair Cake, which is a chocolate mm. vanilla marshmallow infused stout, which is fantastic. So just a massive compression of our NPD pipeline to help us stay alive. Brewdog, I think, was one of the first... Uh, uh, at least probably the biggest profile supplier to pivot into sanitizer when uh, there were worries around getting a supply of those products at the start of the pandemic. Um, but I, I gather it wasn't a walk in the park. <laughs> no, so 
as well as survive and try to protect as many jobs as we can, we also wanted to show that business could be a force for good and we wanted to help our country and community get to do this crisis, get through this pandemic. So we quickly pivoted in our distillation business from mm. making vodka and gin and rum and whiskey to making hand sanitizer. Um, we downloaded the recipe from the World Health Organization <laughs> website and we, we tried to go from like zero to, to 100 miles an hour in, mm. in just a few days. And hand sanitizer for hospitals has got to be 80%. So the first batch that we made was 68%. So it actually got turned down by a local hospital, <laughs> which is also the first time we've ever been accused of not putting enough alcohol in a thing as well. <laughs> mm. um, but we quickly, we quickly got it to 80%. And, and since then, we have made and donated over 500,000 bottles of 80% medical grade hand sanitizer to the NHS, to healthcare charities and to key frontline mm. workers. And I worked out a few days ago, that's enabled people to safely sanitize their hands 17 million times. So I'm like just so proud of our team for all the hard work to get us through, but also to be able to do good and help our country through this as well. And it's in punk bottles. Um, we, we used a whole mix of containers, so we couldn't, we mm. couldn't get containers. There was a shortage of sanitizer and a shortage of sanitizer containers. So we had some in mini 100 ml beer bottles and we had various other different containers that we used as well. So I think to date we've packed it in six or seven different types of containers. And the, uh, the IPO then, that's something that's been pushed back? <laughs> <laughs> I do what? Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> and the, the last uh, the last few months has been like a day to day battle to just survive as a business. So mm. IPO has been has been very low on our on our. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're close to getting back in an even keel, but not close to thinking about that again. So it's always an aspiration. It's something we'd love to do at some point in time, but not something that's in our thinking at the moment.